want to talk about Moby Dick by Herman Melville. I had to read this book for a class last semester, and it was the bane of my existence. From February to May, I had to read this freaking book, and I don't know how many pages it was because the um, edition that I had did not have page numbers and when I tried to download the Kindle version um, so that I could cite properly, it also did not have page numbers. The audiobook was like 25 hours. Not cool, bro. Not cool. It was 133, 33, 133 to 135 chapters. And it was so tedious. Now, I did think that there were chapters that were interesting. I feel like they had Melvin, Melville through Ishmael made interesting commentary, but ultimately this book drove me up the freaking wall. So for those who don't know, Moby Dick is about a whale named Moby Dick. Captain Ahab was on a voyage or something. He, he, was, he went out whaling. I don't know if this was his first whaling expedition or it was like a little ways into the whaling experience, but he went out whaling and he was trying to kill Moby and Moby like got the best of him, bit off his leg, almost killed him. He now walks with an ivory leg. Okay, great. Now he's set on vengeance and he's going to capture and destroy this whale, but he doesn't. Moby is sort of a, a mysticized creature. He's, he, I think it works really well. It's. The setting is the sea, you don't know what's down there, he, you know, I, I feel like the word Leviathan is used, but he's just like this mysterious creature of the deep, and he, um, supposedly, he was seen, like, in multiple time zones at multiple places at once, and everybody saw, like, the harpoon sticking out of him, and, but he was still alive and well, this, like, great white whale just just you know dashing about and having no cares and just smashing humans and their boats left and right and Ahab was like nah son I'm gonna get you and Starbuck was his first mate um, and he was the only one that kind of vocalized his reticence about the whole affair well there he had some people behind him I think but he didn't really, they, I don't remember them saying anything, it was mainly Starbuck because he had more authority than they did. He had, <sighs> he had like authority, period. I mean, not as much authority, authority as the captain, but he had some authority. He could vocalize his, his issues. And he was like, but like, sir, this isn't we're not out here for your vengeance we're out here to make some money like vengeance is gonna take people's lives we're not doing that and ahab was like that's what you thought though this is my ship you're gonna do what the f i say and um i think it was starbuck who was like but you're mad at, at an animal who responded because you attacked him and ahab was like if the sun smote me i'd smote that motherfucker back because like it's me and Starbucks is like, this dude is crazy. Um, and there's just, it's, it's, it's a three, three, 300 year, what? Three year voyage. And that's what the book, it shows like them meeting up with other captains. And so some of these things I did find interesting. They met up with another captain who had his arm bitten off by Moby and that guy was turning back. He was like, <laughs> now nah, son, uh, you good with that? You stay with that whale. I am going home. And Ahab was like, all right, whatever. You won't get the glory of defeating this monstrous being. And the guy's like, that's fine. I just want to go home. Like, I want to go home with my broken arm and just be happy. And so they just keep going on. And we get like the minutest details, like the, the daily minutia of everything. Like if I told you guys, that, you know, somebody was like, what did you do today? And I was like, well, I slept for a lot of the day, then I woke up, and then I started recording videos. That would be a good, succinct summary. Rather than 
having that summary, there'll have been a chapter on my dreams, a chapter on when the time before I got out of bed when I was watching an episode or two of Spongebob, and then there would be a chapter on me making my tuna sandwich, and then there would be a chapter on me having some chips after the sandwich, and then there would be a chapter on my camera setup, and then there would be a chapter on each individual video. And that got tedious. Imagine all of those details transposed to a bunch of sailors on a ship and hearing about the same event from multiple perspectives. Someone was hanging out in like the place around or above the sail or whatever the fuck and someone heard it from downstairs in on um, like the near the cabins and somebody else heard this and somebody else was thinking this while this happened and then also imagine the conversations between each sailor of a different nationality and what he said and how he felt about every single thing and then imagine chapters dedicated to the thoughts of the particular native groups and then the thoughts of the negroes and then the thoughts of the non-natives and negroes and how they perceived the natives and the negroes that got so tedious the last 15 chapters or so did sort of make it worth it it was really like it was wild to read they finally made it to the equator they made it to moby starbuck thought about killing ahab he doesn't because his christianness like gets the better of him and he's like i can't do it you know that's that's not okay uh moby gets the better of ahab he kills him the only survivor is ishmael um and that's presumably how he's able to like tell us this story and moby just continues about his life still just poten potentially alive to this day and i'm just getting goosebumps thinking about it because it's just it was wild and it was crazy and it was intense but again, those final 15 chapters were actually good. And there were a few like stuff sprinkled throughout it. But overall, I just finished making my video about um, the books that I DNF'd and The Grapes of Wrath, how it's supposed to be a great American novel. This is also supposed to be a great American novel. It's just long. It's just an American novel. It's just an American novel from the 1800s that may have talked about some potentially groundbreaking things like I think the portrayal of of the native and black characters, I guess they were a little bit more sympathetic than somebody else might have made them. And there's this one point where um, Melville goes on a nice long rant about whiteness and how it's actually like not as great as, as you think it will be because nature is painted with the harlot's paintbrush like there are multiple colors in nature and you know you usually throw white paint over something to like cover up its imperfections and all that was cool very interesting social commentary to mention that there are also homosexual over or undertones ishmael and queequeg get married in bed in like a south Pacific in South in I don't remember where Queequeg was supposed to have been from some like made up island in the South Pacific um, but they got married in bed together and it's intimated that the sailors you know pleasure each other because men three years away you need to do something but that book could have been a third of its size and we still could have gotten all of that interesting social commentary and impact and stuff like that so my recommendation, don't read it. If you have to read it for school, well, you're just shit out of luck, buddy.